So quantum information theory is uh, the extension of uh, ideas from classical information theory and, and computer science to the quantum realm because we know that quantum mechanics uh, behaves very differently to our everyday experience, has all sorts of interesting effects that we don't see in our everyday life and quantum information theory is the theory that kind of tries to harness these effects for our advantage to do interesting things that we can't do with uh, normal physics. Quantum computing, quantum information are becoming increasingly more, more important and especially right at the moment because in a few years time we'll start seeing uh, very large scale quantum devices being developed, uh, examples being you know, the uh, work going on here at IBM but also elsewhere. Uh, which can really solve problems which we don't know how to solve using our normal computers. And this could really be the, you know, the next uh, significant change in the IT industry and it could affect a number of, of other important uh, in industries worldwide. So I think now's the time for students to try and understand uh, how these machines really work. There are several ways that they can do that. Uh, one way uh, is they can you know, go to a university and do some courses uh, to do with quantum computing, quantum information. You know, I teach one myself at, at Bristol, but you know, there are many excellent courses worldwide, including ones available online. Um, but now they can also experiment with uh, on online quantum computer simulators or even real quantum computers. For example, uh, IBM's own, uh, own quantum experience uh, uh, cloud-based quantum computing interfaces is a nice example of this. So there's a, a number of different um, ways that they can get into this area from just kind of you know, small-scale tinkering to really sort of full-on um, preparation for a career in quantum computing. So the interesting thing about quantum algorithms is that they are based on very different principles to classical algorithms and they try and use these interesting quantum effects to to do things we, we can't do you know, w without quantum mechanics. And because these, uh, these effects are so different to our everyday experience, it makes it hard to write, write algorithms in this way. And so we've seen that uh, even though there's been a lot of exciting work done on quantum algorithms, we don't have as many algorithms as we would like. There's still a lot of interesting challenges uh, ahead. Um, and one way in which this is uh, changing is that you know, soon uh, people will be able to run fairly large-scale algorithms on real devices, and even now they can already run small-scale algorithms on, on real devices. Um, so I think that uh, we're going to start seeing more quantum algorithms being developed, like both intrinsically new algorithms and ones based on uh, optimising and refining existing algorithms, now that people have access to, to real devices to play with. So I think it's an exciting time in that sense. I wish there was you know, a magic, standard, straightforward technique that would just take a classical algorithm and give us a, a quantum speed up. Um, unfortunately, you know, there isn't in full generality and you know, there are algorithms where we know that we can't achieve a quantum speed up. Uh, but there are some uh, fairly general techniques that, that we do know, um, which are often based around you know, choreographing quantum interference in some uh, clever way to try and achieve a desired result. So we know, for example, some, some fairly general purpose techniques for speeding up the solution of constraint satisfaction problems and certain optimization problems. And I, I think uh, finding new uh, approaches for kind of general speed up of classical algorithms is an exciting direction for the future. I think the killer app for quantum computers uh, at the moment seems to be simulation of quantum systems, quantum physical systems. So this is something which is very hard to do in full generality on a classical computer. But we know uh, some very clever quantum algorithms that enable efficient simulation of quantum mechanical systems, which could have applications in areas as diverse as material science, uh, drug design, um, this kind of thing. Uh, but also I think uh, an area which is very interesting is quantum speedups of uh, hard optimization tasks, uh, which could have you know, very wide ranging impacts in all sorts of different in industries, because in almost you know, ev every um, aspect of, of life nowadays, you know, there are algorithms behind the scenes solving hard computational uh, problems. And I think that it will be very interesting to see uh, to what extent uh, these kind of optimization problems um, that are going on you know, behind the scenes ca can be accelerated with a quantum computer. A quantum algorithm for accelerating a class of classical algorithms, which are known as, as backtracking algorithms. So, these are algorithms for solving uh, constraint satisfaction problems uh, 
classically, which uh, can be seen as kind of trial and error type algorithms. You, you try a solution, if it doesn't work, you try a slightly different solution, etc. Um, and it turns out that you can get a fairly substantial quantum speed up of these algorithms in, in some sort of generality. Uh, so this is a kind of a, a general uh, framework that we can accelerate. But then an interesting question is, what specific problems can we uh, target using this kind of approach? And uh, in some joint work together with, with a student, we were able to show that uh, the famous traveling salesman problem, the certain algorithm for this, can be accelerated using a quantum algorithm. So I think this is a very interesting direction for, for future work because there's a whole world of these algorithms out there based around similar kind of paradigms and it's possible we might be able to, to find some interesting quantum speed ups there. And these could have a number of different applications to constraint satisfaction problems but also optimization problems more, more generally. In the near term, the sort of quantum computers that we have um, are not going to be perfect, they're going to be kind of noisy, they're going to have kind of errors, faults, th things like this, as well as being relatively small compared with what we hope we can build in the, in the long term. What problems can we solve with these kind of noisy near-term devices, uh, that especially problems that we really care about solving? You know, what, what interesting uh, challenges can we address with the sort of machines we're going to have in the coming five years rather than the coming you know, 20 years?